Hey guys, I'd like to talk today about the difference between rocks and minerals. And you can see on the screen I had accidentally deleted a couple of things. So rock or mineral. Uh, we both know that, or we all know that rocks are solids, so are minerals. Uh, rocks are formed in nature, so are minerals. And rocks cannot be liquid or gases and same thing with minerals they can't be that either but there are two different big differences between rocks and minerals one of them is that minerals have a definite chemical makeup I'll tell you what I mean by a definite chemical makeup Say we have over here this rock. Uh, this rock is going to be granite. Now inside granite you have different kinds of minerals. Inside this rock we have the mineral quartz. Inside granite we also have the mineral feldspar. Another thing you find characteristic of granite is mica. So you can see inside this particular rock we have different kinds of minerals. If you were to take this rock and find, find it on the other side of your yard, it would still have quartz and feldspar and mica, but different, different percentages of it. You see, if you find granite all over the world, it'll still have quartz and feldspar and mica, but some will have more quartz, some will have more feldspar, some will have more mica. It's just not the same exact makeup every single time. And that's one of the di how, it, how it's different in their chemical makeup. If you find a mineral, let's say you find this uh, say you find this piece of gold here in Georgia, that gold is going to be the same in India. It's going to be the same in China. It's going to have the same chemical makeup no matter where you go. And that's one of the big differences between rocks and minerals. Another difference between rock and minerals is going to be that minerals have a definite crystal structure. A definite crystal structure. And you know what a crystal structure looks like. It's kind of shiny. It has smooth, flat surfaces. And I have a picture here of something that has of a mineral that has a crystal structure. You can see you have flat surfaces. It, it, it looks different from your average rock. But the key is your average rock has minerals in it. It's just the minerals are flattened out and and they don't look quite as crystalline but you can find rocks that have the little shiny appearance to it so that's one of the differences is that minerals also have a definite crystal structure now there are going to be groups of minerals uh, scientists have decided that the most common groups of minerals are called silicates put this in blue most common grouping of minerals are called silicates. Now silicates are made of oxygen and silicon and that's where you get the term silicate from. Uh, now silicates are so common that the book is going to tell you that about 90 percent of the earth's crust of the minerals in the earth's crust are silicates and silicates are not the only not the only groupings of minerals, you also have carbonates, you also have oxides, but the most common of these is going to be silicates. Now you may wonder how minerals in general are formed. Oh, there's, there's not just one way, there are several ways minerals are formed. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to list some that happen to be in the book. One mineral that you might not realize as a mineral is going to be salt. And one way you get salt is whenever seawater 
is evaporated. When seawater is evaporated, you're left over with salt. So that's one way you can have a mineral form is when seawater is evaporated. Another way you can have minerals form is deep in the earth, whenever you have a lot of heat and pressure. Another way minerals are formed are actually with volcanic activity. Not just on the what comes out of the volcano, but what's down in the volcano. Uh, sometimes that forms, uh, forms minerals. And one thing I bet you didn't think was a mineral is ice. Ice is actually a mineral, but what ice comes from, water, is not a mineral. So the process that makes this mineral ice is going to be freezing. And then finally, there are just some organisms that create minerals naturally in their body. And yes, we humans are one of those organisms. Uh, inside our teeth and inside our bones is a mineral called apatite. And we didn't have to take anything special to form this in our body. We just naturally form this. Now some minerals are in high demand. Uh, naturally, something like gold will be in high demand, uh, silver will be in high demand, and you'll find others like iron and copper that are in high demand as well. To get these out of the rocks that they're in, uh, some rocks contain, contain enough of these things to be mined for profit. And if you are going to mine minerals for profit, these minerals are then called ores. Gold would be an ore because you can mine it for profit. Silver would be an ore. Copper an ore. Iron is an ore. And there are several different ways that people get these or mine these minerals. Uh, one way is called strip mining. And you have a couple other ways we'll talk about. We have open pit mining and we have deep mining. And I won't put the mining part, but you have open pit and you have deep mining. Like I said, our book will talk a little bit more about those. Pictures go. Here we have minerals that happen to be on the left side. And we have the... Uh, rocks that happen to be on the right side here. Now notice there are further classifications of rocks into sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic, and you'll see that in some of the upcoming videos. But notice some of the differences here. The minerals, you may recall, have a definite crystal structure. And you can definitely see that like right here and probably even a little bit right here. But when you just pick up some kind of mineral, it might not be as easily known that it has crystal structure. It might be kind of uh, worn down a little bit, you might, see, might say. And the other difference, of course, was that you have the same chemical makeup everywhere. This muscovite is going to have the same percentages of elements in it as it will anywhere you find muscovite, whereas sandstone, you may recall, has a, a hodgepodge of things that are good enough to be called sandstone. Okay, let's see what we have down here. Just a reminder, a rock. You have uh, minerals that are found in the rock. So the minerals are kind of the building blocks of the rock. And here we have some definite minerals that are down here. And we have final slide. Uh, just some more pictures of the crystalline structure. I had kind of a close-up right here. And uh, here you have a definite crystal structure in this geode. Uh, it's a little bit harder to tell on some of these. Some of these minerals have been polished up pretty well, so it's probably not what you'd see like out in the out in the real world. But here's a pretty nice looking one right there. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about rocks and minerals.